is Energy Medicine Yoga. We're going to start standing today. Make sure you have um, two blocks or a substitute. Um, something like um, hardback books or um, full toilet paper rolls. All right, so just shake your body out. Just kind of do uh, any movement that brings you and your awareness into your body. That might mean jumping up and down. <laughs> um, but tune in <clears throat> and just find your body. And then find your feet connected to the earth. Take a good solid stance. Have a, a degree of muscle engagement and a degree of ease. Draw your attention inward as we begin by lowering your gaze to a point on the ground or closing your eyes. Let your spine be nice and tall. <clears throat> Think of it as a vertical spine. It's never going to be straight. Uh, we'll respect the natural curves of the spine. But try to orient so that the tailbone is pointing down to the ground like an anchor. And the crown of your head is right above the spinal column. Think of the ears over shoulders. Uh, there's no tipping forward of the chin or even lifting the chin too high. So experimenting, moving, micro adjustments until you find that spot. Let your shoulders be broad. And take in a nice big, deep, exaggerated breath. And then exhale it out of the body, doing that a couple of times to help really place your attention within. Eventually return your breath to your normal rhythm and pace and time. And let your attention rest on the breath. Noticing how the breath enters the body at the edge of the nostrils. Just noticing your breath in whatever way it moves and changes your body as it moves through. Taking this time to pay attention to the breath is deeply calming and it naturally begins to slow the breath, uh, timing and depth. Just one more round of breath with your attention very precisely focused on it. When you finish that exhale, release that attention. Uh, bring your hands to meet at your heart in Anjali Mudra. Press palms, fingertips, and thumbs together. And then swivel uh, the hands so that fingers are pointing uh, towards either elbow, palms touching. Draw the hands away from one another until the fingers bind. This is Ganesha Mudra. And let the back of the left knuckles be touching your sternum. Uh, the symbolism of this mudra is related to um, Ganesha, who is considered the remover of obstacles. I invite you to set an intention for this practice of yoga. An intention is just a, a single word, a quality, a characteristic, an aspiration, something you want more of within yourself. Take a big deep breath in and a slow, smooth, deep exhale out. I share this quote from Albert Einstein, who was very much engaged in studying energy. He said, everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want. And release your hands to your sides, palms face forward. Check in that your feet are uh, about inner hips with distance apart, roll forward and backward side to side, really spreading out the sole of the feet, lift toes up, spread them out and lower. Have a nice broad base connecting you to the earth. Let's wake the body up with a couple of sun breaths. Inhale, arms out and up. Your hands will um, meet up overhead at the top of the inhale and turn your palms away and exhale slowly. 
tune into the timing of your breath. We'll do three of these. Inhale. Let the breath lead the movement. When you're ready to exhale, palms turn down. Think about just combing this aura around you and bringing your energy back to your center to add your pelvis. Inhale. Gather it in and exhale. Bring it back to your center. All right, let's uh, inhale, arms up overhead. Press down through feet and reach up long and tall through your hands. You can look up and lift your chin, open up the front of the neck, and then bring chin back parallel to the ground and bend at the elbows and add some tension as you grab outer elbows and pull in opposite directions. And just sense how that is opening up the back shoulders, pull your belly in. And then from here, take a breath in and exhale, side bend to the right. Really press into the left heel. If you want to add to it, you could send the hip in the opposite direction, or you can just modify and keep it moderate on it um, as your body's waking up. Inhale, lift and lengthen through the spine. Exhale, side bend to the left. And inhale, back up to center. Lift both arms up parallel. Exhale, right arm down and side bend again and see if you can go a little deeper. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, left hand lowers, side bend to the left, and just feel the enjoy this. Enjoy your body, pull your belly in, keep this top shoulder up rather than coming forward. And then inhale, both arms up overhead, hands touch, exhale them to your heart, and release. Step a little wider and soften through all your joints. Think ankles, knees, hips, elbows, shoulders, everything soft. Let's do the Qigong twist, arms out wide. And I invite you to <clears throat> top, to tap, sorry, uh, your opposite um, front chest point and your opposite back hip point. And just find your own momentum. You don't have to do it at the same time as me. Make sure everything, all the joints are soft. And let this gently wake up your body. Press firmly down through the soles of your feet. You can go fast, you can go slow. Uh, just make sure all the joints are soft and you can sense and feel energy flowing, waking up the body. One more time each side and release and let it go. Let's do the uh, energy wake up. Two fingers meet the thumbs. Find where your collarbones almost meet. Come down an inch and over an inch. This is a general guideline. Just try to find this little indentation right beneath your collarbones, um, just away from the sternum. When you find it, then you're gonna begin tapping with some, some vigor. Uh, you should hear it, it's thumping. Um, it's, for this practice, we need to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. This is an energy clearing practice and you're tapping energy points or meridian points. Think of um, Chinese medicine and acupuncture. So finding that spot, begin tapping vigorously unless it hurts. And in that case, you would just circle. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. Keep that breath pattern. That's your job to remember that breath pattern while I explain what's happening for the various points that will thump. Thumping, tapping, massaging, which is what we'll do in an energy medicine yoga class is um, <clears throat> about learning to move with the energy flow of the body. Uh, there are 14 major meridians. Most of them are running um, vertically in the body. There's just two that are horizontal. Um, and we try to work with the flow uh, of the energy um, and then gets you moving in an optimal way. And you really can feel it tangibly. Uh, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. Let's go to the second point. By the way, that was your end of your kidney meridian. Second point is about midway, um, the sternum from breastbone to collarbone, finding the middle and tapping with just one hand, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. Let it be audible, hear it, release it, let it go. We have to work on uh, clearing uh, our energy every day, uh, just the way you have to uh, tend to dusting the house. Um, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth, and tapping here is related to the thymus, and it's about an immune boost, a really critical uh, place in your body you want to keep balance, a good meridian to tend to. Third of the places to tap is this upper side ribs. Uh, you can use the inside of a fist, your beak fingers, or you could circle. 
Breathe into the nose, breathe out through the mouth. Hearing it, you can hear the tapping. If it's tender, don't avoid it, just circle. Uh, this is the end of the spleen meridian, and it's all about metabolism in Chinese medicine. Breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. And as in all things in Chinese medicine, it's not just about your physical metabolism, it's the way you metabolize your feelings, your thoughts, your words, your actions. Breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. And the last of the tapping is uh, the orbital bone uh, right underneath the eye, not the soft tissue, but the bone. And I just lightly rolling fingertips, breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. This is the beginning of the stomach meridian and it's very grounding for the energy you've just lifted. Shake your hands off, palms face down and lift the same knee to touch the palm of the same side hand just a couple times. This is a homolateral pattern in what we fall into when we are uh, low ebb, lethargic, sick, or sad. So we recognize it and dust our hands off and shake it off and we move in um, the pattern that our body prefers, which is the crossover. You can make this as active as you like. Uh, you can add a twist and look to the side um, and you can make it as uh, easy going as you like, just making sure you cross the midline. This is the way we walk. We're just adding to it. You can touch ankle, um, breathing in through the nose as you do this and breathing out through the mouth. And one more time each side and let it go. Dust your hands off, shake them off, bring hands to the base of your body, call to mind your intention. On an inhale, draw fingertips, your breath and your intention up through your central meridian, up overhead and exhale, palms face away to smooth it out. Think of this as embodying your intention. On your inhale, draw up and exhale, smooth it out. Last one. And to end this, place one finger on your navel, one finger uh, between the eyebrows as you lightly press in and lift up, breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. Doing that breath pattern again, just explaining that you're connecting your central um, meridian with your governing meridian like a circuit. You're amplifying the energy that passes through this. This is very grounding and stabilizing and centering and a good thing to do before you are to speak to a group of people or lead a class or give a presentation. And release and let it go. Shake uh, arms and legs out. And we'll move right into um, an energy medicine yoga, sun salutation. Using the blocks if you have them, if you don't, you'll adapt. Uh, standing at the top of your mat and a good idea in sun salutation, since they are a salute to the sun, that you face the light source or the window. Uh, find mountain pose. Feet are like the equal sign uh, and inner hip width distance apart. Toes point forward. Add a little movement to the feet, wake them up, spread them out, and then connect them to the earth. Tailbone points down through the earth like your anchor, and inhale, arms out wide and up high. Look up at your thumbs for a little back bend, Urdhva Stasana. Turn your palms away and hinge at the hips as you bow forward. Uh, add a bend to your knees. If hamstrings are tight, then lift the hips up and point the crown of the head down. Inhale, lift up halfway. Think long arms, long legs, long spine, long neck. Exhale, forward fold. And then step the uh, left foot back, straight leg lunge. Lower the hips, wake them up. Uh, feel the hip flexors waking up as you keep lowering your pelvis. Lift your heart, lift your gaze. And then lower the back knee down to the ground. Uh, bring, if you have a block, bring that block to the top of the, um, right big toe inside because we're going to twist to the right or the hand can touch the ground and add the twist left ribs down right ribs up toward the ceiling pulling this knee towards your ribs or your ribs towards your knees and then lift your arm up and look up if that's all right adding some wrist circles and then um, adding arm circles by taking your arm backwards just as much as your shoulder allows three of these and then the hand points up to noon and releases down, release the twist, 
lift the back knee, spin the back foot to connect with the earth. We're preparing to rise up into extended side angle. So take your time, press down through the feet, uh, rise up and place right forearm on the right thigh with palm facing up, add a twist, right ribs down to the ground, left ribs up to the ceiling. And then this top arm points up or over to the side. Think about a line of energy from the back left heel up through the left fingertips. You might even choose to look up. And then release, involve the torso, spin on the ball of the back foot to come back into your straight leg lunge, and step back to table. Find table, walk hands slightly forward, spread them out to uh, starfish, and then inhale to your cow back. Lift the hips, lower the belly, lift the heart, and exhale into a cat back. Tuning into your breath cycle, really lifting up, rounding the spine, pulling your chin towards your pubic bone, and then inhale back into the cow back, lift the back hips, lower the ribs, lift the heart through the gateway of the shoulders, and exhale. Take your time, move through this cat cow to the fullest range of your motion, and then inhale to neutral table. Uh, let the tops of the feet touch the ground as we're going to go through a little flow of table to child's pose to cobra. So inhale, table, no action. Exhale, modify child's pose as you release hips to heels and touch forehead to the ground. And inhale to table. This is a flow, you're just keeping in motion. Lower the hips and come into a version of Cobra. Let your back warm up to the, you decide how, how deep you go in these. Inhale the table. Exhale to modified child's pose, hips to heels, forehead touches the ground. Inhale the table. And exhale to Cobra. Lower the hips, open the back, lift the chin and inhale to table. Tuck your toes and lift the hips up downward facing dog. Find a little bit of movement and warm up in this pose with uh, walking the dog, one heel down, opposite knee bend. And doing that uh, side to side. Make sure that you're spreading the hands out wide and press into the index finger and thumb. Take time to sway the hips side to side and then take time to shake your head yes and turn your nose towards the bicep, shake no and release and come into the stillness of downward facing dog. On your next inhale, the, I'm sorry, the left leg rises for three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee and step that left foot forward for straight leg lunge. Lower the hips, tune in to waking up this right hip flexor. You can grab blocks if that's helpful, or you can be on spider fingertips as you try to lift your gaze forward of your mat, and then back knee lowers to touch the ground. We're gonna um, twist to the left. Your hand can touch a block that's gonna give you a little bit more room in your torso to twist, or your hand can touch the ground, but add the twist, right ribs down to the ground, left ribs up to the ceiling, pull the thigh towards the chest, lift the left arm up, and look up. Add wrist circles. Feel that all the way into your shoulders. Keep the alignment in your twist and then open the shoulder. Take the left arm back, make big arm circles. Doing that three times. And then the arm points up to the ceiling. Revolve um, the chest to face back down towards the mat. Lift the back knee, spin the back right foot to fully connect and prepare to make this foundation for your extended side angle. Feel free to change the alignment of your feet to get into the right position. Front forearm is on the front thigh, palm faces up. Add the twist, left ribs down to the ground, right ribs up to the ceiling. And this time I invite you to sweep that front arm in front of your face and land at that angle. Line of energy, lift your heart, back right foot through right fingertips and look up. Extended side angle. Keep breathing. And then to come out of this, pivot onto the ball of the back foot, revolve the chest and face down, find yourself in your straight leg lunge, and then come back into the table. 
Once in table, spread your hands out wide, walk them slightly forward of your shoulders, tuck your toes, and um, inhale, cow. Lift your hips, lower your belly, lift your heart, fill up your lungs. When you're ready to exhale, you reverse into your cat back. I'm really enjoy your breath here. Really, um, it's going to the full range of motion of your spine. Follow your breath cycle. When you need the inhale, you come back into cow. And we'll meet back in neutral table. And let's flow. Inhale, table, no action. Untuck your toes. Exhale, modify child's pose. Sink your hips. Feel your shoulders um, open by your hands connecting and holding you to the mat while you release your head. Inhale, up to table. Exhale, lower the hips, come into a cobra pose. Lift your chin if your back is warmed up. Inhale, back to table. Exhale, the child's pose. Take your time, follow the length of your breath if it's different from mine. Inhale to table. Exhale, lower your hips, find yourself in cobra. Squeeze your glutes, push down through your thighs, lift up through your chin and back to table. Last one. Exhale, child, hold it a little longer. Make your exhale last a little longer. When it's time to inhale, come up to table. And slowly exhale and hold a little longer in cobra. Press down to the tops of the feet, your firm thighs, and lift up through the belly as you lift up through the sternum and up through the chin. And release and come into table. Tuck your toes. Exhale, lift your hips up, downward facing dog. And just find stillness here. Your body is warmed up now. Lift your hips up, pull your belly towards your thighs. Arms frame the ears. Heels are lowering down towards the earth and, you, and you're and you really lowering your heart rate and slowing your breath down. And then inhale, lift your left leg long behind you, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, pull it to your chest. Step that foot forward, press off back foot to join the front foot. Find yourself in your forward fold. Lift the hips up, add some legs to the legs as those hamstrings are warming up. Point the crown of the head down. And now pull your belly to the spine as you inhale. Arms out wide. Rise up. Arms up overhead, ergos toss and a look up. Hands touch. Exhale them to your heart. Take a breath in and a breath out. Release hands to your thighs. Inhale, arms out and up. Exhale, swan dive, down with a bow. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway up, long arms, long legs. Crown of the head reaches forward. Pull shoulder blades together on your back. Pull your belly to your spine. Exhale, back to your forward fold. Step the right foot back, straight leg lunge. Lower those hips and then be light on fingertips as you prepare to rise up in the Alanasana. Inhale, arms up. Sink your hips. Pull your shoulder blades together. And just breathe here. Feel steady. Feel balanced. Back leg is your power leg. Make sure it's long and strong. And then exhale. Hands float down to frame the front foot. Step back. Downward facing dog. And come a little deeper. Lift the hips up. Push the weight back towards the heels. Pull your ribs towards your thighs and slow your breath. You're gazing at your big toes. On an inhale, shift forward to plank. Squeeze everything. Feel that line of energy. Push your heels away from the body. Reach the crown of the head forward. Shoulders broad. Core is active. And then exhale. Knees can touch the ground or you can go down in full plank and then release the weight of the body. Tops of the feet touch, press down through the legs to rise up through the heart and enjoy this back bend, cobra. Exhale, lower, tuck your toes, and we press up to meet in downward facing dog. You could press up to table and then lift your hips up to downward facing dog. 
point the tailbone up. Really hinge the hips, no rounding in the low back to get the value of this pose. As you lengthen your spine and you lengthen the back of your legs, keep breathing, slow the heart rate. On an inhale, your right leg rises. Exhale, bend the knee and step it forward. Straight leg lunge, lower the hips. Be strong in your legs. Square the hips, so right hip back, left hip forward. Be on spider fingertips to see how it feels. And then press down through the front foot to lift the spine. Rise up through the arms. Sink your weight of the pelvis down toward the ground. Pull shoulder blades together. Gaze is forward. Palms are facing one another. Alanasana. Pull your belly in. Lift your sternum up. Exhale. Hands foot down. Free the front foot. Press off back foot to join the front foot. And stay here for an extra breath. As you lift up through the, through the sit bones and point the crown of the head down, pull your belly to your spine and come a little deeper in your forward fold. Now pull the belly to the spine and press down through feet and inhale, reverse swan dive, arms out wide and up high, rise up, reach up, look up, hands touch, exhale them to your heart and let it go. Sun salutations are a great way to work with your energy to lift it up and get it moving forward. All right, let's uh, do our yin yang meridian clear. Um, in this case, you're working with the flow. Yang energies travel from uh, the top down and yin energies travel from the bottom up. So let's, let's clear them both. Rocking forward and backward on your feet. Palms face forward. Inhale, arms out wide and up high. Look up as you press down through feet and reach up through your hands. And then let the right hand be on top of the left hand as you trace down the outside edges of your arms, shoulders, ribs, and uh, pull across the belt meridian, one of the horizontal meridians, until you get to your hips. As you press down the legs, you're adding a little bit of pressure, and this is going down. Outside of the legs is the gallbladder meridian. Off the edge of the pinky toe, shake it off. Two fingers come on the inside of the big toe. Trace up the inside of the foot, ankles, calves, thighs. You're tracing up the spleen meridian. Flare out at the hip crease, up the side ribs to the armpits, and then back down to where we were tapping at the end of the spleen meridian. You can just circle here. Release your hands to your sides and let's go again. Inhale, arms out and up. This time, left hand will sit on top of right hand as you begin to trace the outside edges of the arms going down beyond meridians, coming down ribs, pulling across the belt meridian, sliding your hands down the outside of the legs and off <clears throat> the pinky toe, you shake your hands off. Two fingers come together and trace the inside of the big toe foot ankle, calves, inner thighs, flare out at the hip crease, up the side ribs to the armpits, and back down to the end of the spleen meridian circle. Release your hands, inhale, arms out and up. When your hands meet up overhead, let the fingertips tent. So fingertips and thumbs space between the base of the palms. And then exhale, place your thumbs at your sternum the index fingers where your collarbones would almost meet. This is triple warmer mudra. Take a full breath cycle here. And exhale. And release your hands. Let's do a chair, a Utkatasana chair series. Um, find your mountain pose, press down, Tadasana, press down through feet, palms face forward. Inhale, arms out and up. Look up, Urdhvastasana. Bring your gaze parallel to the ground and exhale. Sink into chair pose. And find this chair pose. Check down that you can look at your big toes, that the knees aren't covering them. And feel this rectangle of the spine. Pull your belly to the spine and lift your heart up. Let your gaze be forward or maybe three feet in front of you on the ground. And then let's bend it down as hands go down. You lengthen through the legs and you come into Uttanasana, forward fold. Lift the hips up, point the crown of the head down. Now let's add a spinal twist. Um, 
bend the right knee, place the right hand between your um, feet in front of them on spider fingertips or on a block, right hand to right hip as we twist. Bring left ribs down to the ground, twist right ribs up to the ceiling. Remember your right knee is bent, your left leg is straight, and then lift the left arm up. You can look up if that's okay with your neck. Try to keep hips level, even though I've brought you asymmetrical. And then release your spinal twist. Come back into your forward fold and release both legs. Then let's do it the other side. Add a bend to uh, the left knee. Place the left hand between your feet in front of them. Add the twist. Left ribs down to the ground, right ribs up to the ceiling. And then right arm lifts. You can look up. Try to keep hips level. Um, feel this nice spinal twist and then revolve your uh, torso to face back down towards the earth. Um, from here, bring hands to meet at your sacrum and interlace them. Take your uh, arms, your interlaced hands and arms now away from your spine and just let gravity help open your shoulders, taking them as far as your shoulders allow. You can have a bend in the knees if that helps you. Then bring the hands back down to touch the sacrum. Let the palms touch the sacrum. Uh, and then add a bend in the knees as though you are preparing to come into chair pose. These hands are now on the sacrum the, and um, a very powerful energy point called the Ming Men point. I want you to stay in chair pose as you circle the Ming Men point. It doesn't matter which direction, activating it. And then draw your hands around to the belt meridian, come back into chair pose. We're going to do um, connecting heaven and earth from chair pose. Uh, so it will be lifting right, uh, just to demo it, from chair pose. You press the right palm up, the left palm down, and you lengthen through the spine and look up to the right. And then you'll exhale back to chair pose. So let's do that together. Keep the alignment of chair pose. Pull your belly to your spine. Lift your heart up. Now press right hand up, left palm down. Lengthen through the spine and look up. Exhale, back to chair pose. Find that good alignment of your spine. Switch sides, press left palm up, right palm down, and look up left. Tall spine, point the tailbone down. Exhale, back to chair pose. One more time each side. Right palm up, lengthen, look up. Exhale, chair. Press left palm up right palm down. Find alignment in your spine as you look up and then exhale back to chair. Um, feel that good spinal alignment to come out of chair pose. You're going to let the hands float down towards the earth as you lengthen your legs, point the crown of the head down. Now just step, step slightly wider than your uh, hips at toes point forward and engage, <clears throat> excuse me, engage your core to rise up with a nice tall spine. As you come up to standing, let the arms sweep out and keep your arms out wide and your palms facing up as you lift up. Just getting the orientation of this pose, this is called heaven rushing in, press down through heels, point the tailbone down, lift the core, pull shoulder blades together, lift your chin up, and think of one thing you're grateful for. And then hands tent overhead like we did before, fingertips and thumbs tent. Exhale, thumbs touch the sternum, index fingers touch where the collarbones almost meet. Stay here for an extra breath and triple warmer mudra. Breathing in, breathing out. And release your hands to your side and release your, your uh, leg stance. All right, let's get some lateral poses in. Um, shake it all out, twist side to side, make sure you have let go of uh, our chair pose sequence, and when you're ready, step wide. Um, feet, feet are parallel initially, take a gauge for your um, bent wrists, uh, in terms of don't, go, don't exceed that for how far your feet are. And then turn, for me, I'm going towards the, um, my left foot first, left foot turns 90 degrees towards the short edge of the mat. Back foot can stay parallel with the back edge of the mat, or you can take the heel back, have a 45 degree angle. Take a deep bend in your front knee, 
and you're trying to aim for the thigh being parallel with the ground. You never want this front knee forward of your ankle because you risk injury to your knee. And then just see if you can lower hips. The closer the pelvis is to the ground, the more stable you are. Big opening in the hips. Let's also open up through the body. Bring fingertips to the heart. Open, left arm forward, right arm back. Add to this by pressing down through the front big toe and the back heel. Pull, energetically pull the inner thighs together. They're not moving toward one another. You're just drawing them in. Lift up from pelvic floor to navel to sternum and open. Cross the chest, pulling shoulder blades together. Let's trace the lung meridian. Bring that back hand to touch your shoulder. Trace across the front of your chest and the inside of that arm. Twist as you come forward to touch as far as you can and then trace back. When the hand reaches the back shoulder, release it. Warrior two. Breathing in, breathing out. And then straighten that front leg, bring both feet parallel, just move right into the other side. This right foot now is uh, 90 uh, degree, or pointy towards the short edge of the mat, back heel in a quarter of a turn, deep bend in the front knee. Find the right position first before we add the arms. Fingertips meet at the heart. Check head over shoulders, over pelvis. Check. It's very common to lean towards the front foot. Try to uh, orient your um, top body over your pelvis. When you're ready, arms open out. Gaze is forward. Pull shoulder blades together. Feel strong in your legs. Feel centered in your your focal point, your center of gravity, your pelvis. The archer flow, tracing the lung meridian, back fingertips touch the top shoulder. Trace across the front, add a twist in the torso as you trace down to the beginning of the lung meridian and pull back. And release and breath cycle here in warrior two. And bring, uh, straighten the front leg, bring the feet parallel, and heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. Just marching your feet, letting that go, and roll your shoulders backwards. And let's come down to the ground through Malasana, through a squat. Step your feet wide, heels in, toes out, hands at your heart, take a breath in, and exhale lower. Go down as far as you can. Press elbows into knees, add tension as knees uh, pull in. Lift up from the pelvic floor and lift your gaze up. And hang out here and keep breathing. Malasana. To come out of it, hands touch the ground, one knee touches, the other knee touches. Um, come to a seated pose and let the soles of the feet touch. Bhattakanasana. I'm going to invite you to um, press the soles of the feet together, but pull the toes apart. Don't worry so much about where the knees go. I want the effort here in the soles of the feet. You can, um, hands can grab um, just above the ankle bone. That's touching and a really important energy point. Um, about four fingers above the ankle bone. Inside the bone is uh, spleen six. So just cuffing that. Keep um, adding pressure to the soles of the feet, pulling the toes apart. Lift up nice and tall through the spine and then hinge forward at the hips. Press your heart forward. Try to keep the spine long and your neck in alignment with your spine rather than bowing your head. Coming as far forward as you can. Just tuning in to opening in the hips, the groin, the low back. And then release, come back up. <clears throat> Stretch your legs out um, for Dandasana. As we come onto our backs, let's use our core and go back halfway in a sit back and then release all the way to the ground. To help you, rely on your foundation. Press down through the heels, pull the toes towards the knees. Um, let's just put arms out in front of us <clears throat> at shoulder height uh, to try to keep the, the rectangle of the spine. Take a breath in, lift up tall, and then exhale. Press down through the heels, through the legs, and you pause about halfway and feel all the core activated and hold and keep breathing. And then you're slowly lowering. Try not to use your arms. Try to keep cultivating strength in the core. 
and then lower and release your weight and take a big deep breath in. Bend your knees, palms face up. Find yourself in constructive rest. And let's come right into a hip opener of happy baby. So lift your feet off of the ground, pull the knees towards the chest, separate the knees, bring your arms inside and reach up and grab the outside edges of your feet. <clears throat> and you can add a little to this by rocking, just allowing a passive uh, hip opening. You're rocking, making sure you press down through the sacrum so the whole spine gets a little massage. And then to add to this, you press the feet up toward the ceiling, but the hands resist. You get your own isometric opposite pull and it becomes an, a deeper hip opening. And then release that effort and bring the knees into the chest and wrap your arms around the shins. And again, just a passive rocking, warming down. Uh, let's do the spinal twist. So arms out to a T, take a breath in and exhale, knees fall to the right. Try to keep the knees above the hip line for a deeper spinal twist. If that doesn't feel good, then lower the knees more to waist level. Uh, turn your um, head to the left arm and keep drawing your left shoulder blade back down to the ground. This is a warm down, but we also want to come into a nice opening in the spine without the weight. Pull your head to center and use your core to pull the legs to center and just Take a nice inhale here in alignment. And on your exhale, knees will fall to the left. Draw right shoulder blade back down to the earth and look to the right arm. Full breath cycle here. Head comes to center and pull your legs up to center. And then just gradually unfurl the body long, one leg at a time. Walking your feet out to opposite corners of the mat and then naturally let them splay open. Your arms can remain at a T as long as they're below the shoulder and there's uh, no pain in the shoulder opening. You're welcome to keep them out this wide like a star. Or you can bring them in the traditional um, placement of about a foot away from the hips. Experiment, find the best location that works for you. And Travasana, the focus of this pose, the intention of this pose is to be effortless. Consider the most important pose in a yoga practice. How good are you at letting go? Staying here in silence, I'll draw you back to attention with the ring of a bell in a few minutes.
staying right where you are, just listening. Let the sound, the frequency of this noise, this bell, move through your body from head to toe. And let your awareness re-inhabit your body as you invite the breath to deepen. Slowly letting that breath reanimate you. Invite the fingers to move, the toes to wiggle, wrists and ankles. And then your head turning one way and slowly turning the other. Piece by piece, waking up. And then when you're ready, allow the body to move in any way that feels good. Might be a full extension, might mean curling in, pulling knees to chest. Just tune into what your body is asking for. And eventually knees will bend and you'll roll to one side. I invite you to turn to the left side today, unless you've already turned. And just pause there on your side. Bring your knees a little closer to your chest and recognize this is the fetal pose. And then release it as you transition, press off with a hand and an elbow, and transition to bringing the spine up vertical again. Keep your attention inward, keep your eyes closed. Settle into Sukhasana, easy pose, the sweet spot. <clears throat> and bring your hands to meet at your heart in prayer pose. You're welcome to keep them there or to swivel fingertips pointing away from one another, palms touching and draw the hands away from one another until the fingers bind, placing the back of the left knuckles uh, next to the sternum for Ganesha Mudra. What obstacles do you need removed? Um, I invite you to call to mind your intention. Take it off the mat with you. Let your intention guide your efforts, your action, be a funnel for your energy. And I repeat the quote from Albert Einstein. Everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want. Here's to lifting your frequency. Take a deep breath in. Oh. reminder that chanting the word om, the sound om, is uh, symbolic of our connection to one another and to the universe. Uh, let your hands come to meet, bring the thumbs to your center of your forehead, your third eye, and join me in sharing this Sanskrit reading between us, the word namaste, which recognizes the light we share. Namaste. Thank you for your practice. 